Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here, and Apple surprised us today by dropping the macOS Big Sur 11.6 update. We were expecting a macOS Monterey Beta 7 update because we've got the big Apple iPhone event tomorrow, September 14th at 10 a.m. Instead, we got a Big Sur update. Well, if you thought the 11.5.2 update was strange, well, this one tops that because Apple has done some stuff with this update that they haven't done with any of the previous major point release updates since Big Sur came out in the fall of last year. Well, I'm gonna go over all the information that you're gonna need to know about this update along along with a major zero click exploit that was captured in the wild and already exploited that wasn't clear until late this afternoon. So I'm gonna go over all that along with some open core legacy patcher news for unsupported Macs at the end. We got a lot to cover, so let's jump in and get started. First, let's talk about some of the details of the 11.6 update, along with other releases that Apple put out today. First, they released iOS 14.8 and iPadOS 14.8, plus watchOS 7.6.2, plus the macOS Catalina security update 2021-005, plus a new Safari update 14.1.2 for macOS Catalina and macOS Mojave. For our demonstration machines today, I've got a 2021 MacBook Pro M1 for this machine that's running 11.6, and I have for 11.5.2, a early 2013 MacBook Pro running macOS Big Sur with Open Core Legacy Patcher. So the first thing we need to talk about is the build number. The build number was updated to 20G165. The update size for the update for 11.5.1 to 11.6 was 2.6 gigabytes. If you were going from 11.5 to 11.6, it's 2.7. If you were going for 11.4 to 11.6, it's 2.9 gigabytes. And each one that goes farther back gets a little bit larger because it includes all the fixes all the way back to 11.0.1 that was released in the fall of last year. Now the update itself is available in software update and I've got it on this MacBook Pro here. And as you can see here, it is 2.6 gigabytes on the download for this unsupported Mac and the same thing for this M1 when it installed. I always keep track of how long the update takes to prepare and then reboot to install and then to usable desktop. And I do that because I want you to get a better idea of how long this update is going to take on your machine. This MacBook Pro is one of the fastest Macs available today because it is an M1. So in the preparing phase, after it has downloaded the update to the Mac, it prepares the update behind the scenes to get it ready for the next phase. The next phase after the preparing is installing with the black screen, the Apple logo and the progress bar, and then we get to usable desktop. So the preparing phase took 12 minutes to prepare the update, then it rebooted the installer, and that part took it 16 minutes, and we we're at a usable desktop in 28 minutes. So if you have a 2018 or 2017 or 16, you're going to see that time increase just a little bit by the older the machine you have, but that at least gives you a benchmark of what to expect when you're installing this Mac OS Big Sur 11.6 update on your Mac. Now that we've got some of those details out of the way, let's talk about why this update is different than every other previous release of Mac OS Big Sur. As you can see, there's been 14 releases of macOS Big Sur since November of last year. Normally what Apple will do is they'll release a major point release. And when I say point release here, I'm talking about for an example of that would be macOS Big Sur 11.1. A major release is 11, 12, 13. A major point release is 0.1 and a minor point release would be dot one. So for example, a minor point release would be 11.2.1. Or every time macOS Big Sur is released as a major dot release, like 11.1, it includes a certain set of things to make it a major point release. When we look at the history, and that's why I document this, the, all the history of these updates. So a good example of this is the Apple Silicon M1 firmware updates. If you look here, I've got all of the Apple Silicon firmware updates, the M1 original shipping Macs that came from the factory that got 11.0, and that was 67.23.41.11. Now, every time Apple releases a point release, they usually don't update the firmware. As you can see here, I have in bold 
all of the major dot releases and they saw a firmware update. 11.21 did not, 11.2.2 no, 11.23 no, 11.3 yes. As you can see, it follows a very strict schedule. So when we get to Mac OS Big Sur 11.6, it's the first one that does not include the following. It doesn't include a Apple Silicon firmware update. It doesn't include a T2 bridge update. And Safari wasn't even updated. Safari is usually always updated on every single major release. And it wasn't updated this way. Now, what's interesting is there's a WebKit fix that I'll get to later that was put into Safari. So it's strange that Apple did update WebKit for Safari, but the build number did not change. But what's also interesting is Apple did not release a full installer package. What that means is that if I go to the Mac OS app store right now and download Big Sur, I'm gonna get 11.5. 11.6 is not even there. All also not available is the M1 Apple Silicon Restore file. When Apple releases a major dot release, usually those release at the very same time of the updates. And that's why I use Software Update Inspector. You'll see right in here, everything in the Apple Software Update catalog in the Big Sur 11.6 installer has not been released. If we go to the T2 update here, we can see that it is also not been updated and it is the same version as Mac OS Big Sur 11.5.2. So those are all the differences of the 11.6 update when it comes to versioning. And the major part of all of this is that there is no new features, no resolved issues or bug fixes in this release. They always include something in there. And how can we tell that? We have to use the Apple update page here to decrypt this message ever since the 11.5 update was released. This was like the last Big Sur update in here telling us what was in the update. 11.5.1 started this trend where it says the 11.5.1 update provides important security updates that is recommended for all users. So it's like, okay, great. It includes security updates. So at least it tells us that security updates are released. Plus we can go to the security update guide and look at the Mac OS Big Sur 11.5.1 and see the security updates. But then with 11.5.2, as we talked about in the last video, all it said is it includes bug fixes your Mac. And also note that it says it is not recommended for all users. That is omitted here. So that's what got us to think that it was a Safari fix because Howard Oakley found that there was Safari framework fixes, but it must have only been affecting some users. But it took the community to go in here and realize there was more information about this update than what Apple puts in one small sentence. Now, here we are with the Mac OS Big Sur 11.6 update, and it says this update is recommended for all users and improves the security of Mac OS, which is still different than what this says. There is no bug fixes in there, and it focuses on security updates that need to be installed for all users. So that tells us it's an important update, but it doesn't really tell us anything here. We have to again go back to the security update page and then click on the Mac OS Big Sur 11.6 update to tell us that it fixes two major CVEs in core graphics, and in WebKit. And that's why I wanted to mention Safari updates for Catalina and Mojave because the 14.1.2 update fixes the WebKit vulnerability. The security update for macOS Catalina 2021.005 fixes the core graphics update, but it doesn't even mention Catalina here. So we have to go back to the security update for Catalina and then see that it talks about the core graphics right here. Back to the original reason we started talking about this. Why is it a big deal that it was called 11.6? Well, when we look at the history of the updates, this should have been 11.5.3. It could have been a security fix because that's what the small bug fixes that need to be fixed immediately without releasing a major point release or a security issue that needs to be fixed. And we're only making a big deal about this because Apple really finally got a good update schedule that we could understand. I'm really happy with how they've labeled these releases here. But once Mac OS Big Sur, it turns to security update releases 
that they don't go to the Mac OS Big Sur 2021-001, for example. And they just release 11.6.1 because it's so much easier for users to understand the update system. That's why it's a little bit strange that they did this. And we still don't know if there is going to be one final release that has some bug fixes in Mac OS Big Sur before Mac OS Monterey comes out. Because when Mac OS Monterey comes out, Mac OS Big Sur changes to security release mode where only usually security updates are included and all bug fixes are normally cut off unless there's something major that needs to be fixed. So that's why I wanted to take a little bit of time here and explain that system and what's going on. Now let's focus on one of the most important things of this update, a zero click exploit that was captured by a security team in the wild and that was noted by Apple that this vulnerability has already been actively exploited in the wild. So when you hear that, the people who were putting this exploit in the wild have already installed it on iOS devices, iPad OS devices, and Mac OS Big Sur and Catalina devices. So we need to get this update installed almost as soon as possible. So let's talk about what this thing does. And let's talk about why macOS was in there. It was first only talked about early in the afternoon in that security document, but then this document from Citizen Lab was released that talks about more into it. Citizen Lab has disclosed the vulnerability and code to app has assigned the forced entry vulnerability CVE 2021 3860 and describes the vulnerability as processing a maliciously crafted PDF that may lead to arbitrary code execution. For example, someone could send you a text message and it is blank. A zero click is meaning that the user doesn't have to click on the link to be infected. That's why this is such a serious issue. Now look at this information here. The most important thing to think about here is how fast Apple fixed this update. Look at this sentence right here. Citizen Lab forwarded their results of finding this exploit in the wild to Apple on Tuesday, September 7th. On Monday, today, September 13th, Apple confirmed that the files included in the zero day exploit against iOS and macOS. And they released this patch today, six days later for macOS Big Sur and security update 2021-005 for Catalina. So we need to instead start focusing on how fast Apple was notified of this update, fixed the update, tested the, the update, and deployed the update in six days. The, if you think about how big Apple is as a company and how many millions of machines that Apple has to account for, that's pretty impressive. And it's great to see that. So when we, when we think about real world problems here, talking about the versioning code is small potatoes when we're talking about a serious security exploit. They could have called it 11.20, and as long as they fix this as soon as possible, like they're doing right now, I'm happy with that. So when we talk about recommendations on installing security updates, I recommend this as about as high on the ladder and the scale as you can get when talking about when you should install this update. So normally I say wait at least a couple of days in case installing the update causes any problems. But with something like this, I recommend doing a time machine, backing up your files, and immediately installing the update across all of your iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and Mac OS devices. I hope that gave you a little bit of an idea of what's included in this update. I did run a benchmark, and as I always say in the updates, is I do this just to make sure there should be no wide changes in this. And that's why I'm running it, just to make sure that one of these numbers is not off by a large margin because maybe something was wrong with the update. So this was run on 11.5.2 before I did the update. So 17.35 and 76.51 and 17.44 and 77.03 on 11.6. So very close to being the same. And that's exactly what we want to be able to see. Now let's talk about some open core legacy patcher news. I got word today that a brand new version of Open Core Legacy Patcher is coming out very soon, and it's going to have some great new features in it, and I can't wait to share them with you. 
But one of the big things that I wanted to mention is, is that I've got a brand new guide for Mac OS Big Sur using OpenCore Legacy Patcher that is almost complete. This is going to be the absolute ultimate guide and it's over an hour long. You might think, why in the heck would we need an hour long video? Well, seeing literally hundreds and hundreds of comments on my Mac OS Big Sur Open Core Legacy Patcher video tells me that I left a lot of stones unturned and a lot of questions unanswered in that video. So I hope that you find this useful. You'll have to let me know in the comments if that's something that you're looking for and I'm excited to release it. But again, it took a lot of work to put together, but all the questions should be answered in there. Again, I hope that video and that gives you a little sneak peek of what to look for. Plus we got Mac OS Monterey coming up and I'm gonna be coming out with some videos that talk about some of the new features that I haven't been able to finish covering. So we got a lot to cover and I hope you guys stay tuned. And if you thought this video was valuable to you, give it a thumbs up. And and share it that would really help me out and if you want to see more videos like this in the future click on that subscribe button and if you're already a subscriber you know i truly appreciate you thank you so much and we'll catch you in the next video